Hello everyone, how are you all? Uh, today I'm, I would like to tell you regarding maths. Okay, you all know that you have maths topic in your commerce um, section. So I would like to discuss regarding that. First, let me tell you. I hope that all of you must be liking maths a lot. Maths actually is a very easy subject, you know. So you should always think of maths as a, an easy subject but you need to practice a lot. So always remember practice as they always say practice makes a man perfect. So maths is just about practicing. The more number of problems you solve, the more number of problems you practice, they are going to help you a lot. So hi everyone, my name is Neha and I would like to tell you regarding today's topic maths. So as you all know that maths is a subject, you know many of you may feel that maths is a difficult subject, you won't be able to do it but don't worry at all. I am here in just this class to tell you that maths is very easy, just you have to follow a few techniques and that's it. Practice and consistency is very very important in maths. Bahut ho gaya, let's start with the actual paper pattern. So today I would like to discuss the paper pattern. You, As you already know, you have two sections M1, M2. Let's start with maths. As every one of you know, there are two sections, section 1 and section 2. Our paper is of 100 marks. Maths paper is of 100 marks. So as you already know, they are, these marks are distributed, okay. So let me tell you how. It, total marks, total marks are 100 marks. So you know, for section 1 and section 2. Now, before I start with the actual marks, I would like to tell you that it's just not theory paper. Practicals is also there here, okay. So when we talk about maths, normal pattern like normal paper that paper is out, out of 80 marks 80 marks theory and 20 marks practicals okay so we have two sections right so 40 for section 1 40 marks for section 2 I hope this is clear to you. So let's start. Let me tell you the next part. Now, in this we have three questions. Okay, when we talk about, let's say we'll talk about M1, that is Maths 1, Section 1, and M2 as Maths 2. So in Maths 1 is for 40 marks, there would be three questions. Question number 1, question number 1 will comprise this Always remember that question 1 is a compulsory question, okay. So if you do not attempt it or you, you think that it is for option, then guys, no, it's not for option. So question 1 is a compulsory question. It mainly consists of objective type of questions. So the questions are going to be in the form of, let's say, fill in the blanks, true or false or MCQs questions, okay. So Basically, as I always say, if you score all marks in this question 1, then it becomes very easy for you to score in maths. Always remember. So, question 1 is compulsory. It is generally, question 1 will be generally for 12 marks. Question 1 will comprise of section A, section B, section C. Okay. So now section A will be MCQs, section B will be true or false and section C is going to be fill in the blanks. Same would be there for M2 as well, okay, M2 as well, 12 marks, question 1 is going to be compulsory, 12 marks will be allotted to this question 1. It will comprise of objective type of questions like which I have already shown you here, okay. So remember to complete this question as it is going to help you achieve 
amazing marks okay so question 1 is compulsory again here also in section in m2 paper there are going to be three questions in question 1 a b c first would be mcqs next would be true or false and last but not the least is fib fill in the blanks okay so got everyone have understood yeah so now tell let me tell you that this is regarding question 1 now you must be thinking that what will be there for question 2 question 3 so in question 2 question 3 all there will be options given to you okay so you have to choose any two questions out of three questions and solve them similarly for question 2 so i'll just write down question 2 options and question 3 is also consists of options i hope everyone has understood yeah so now when we talk about maths as i already told you i know that you know many of you might be fearing maths they might be feeling that you know whether i will be able to do it or no but don't worry guys i am here to help you all the way and i will be definitely helping you in solving all right so if you just follow the pattern in which i tell you to study it will be an an amazing journey for you i i would guarantee you that okay maths as always you should remember efficiency consistency and practice are the three keys which are important for maths all right so can we start so everyone you know as i was telling you question 2 has options okay you can solve any two questions out of three questions Okay, for so always remember any two questions out of three questions are going to be there. So, I am just going to tell you how. If you can see question number two, I will just erase this part. Question number two, as I was telling you, alright, question two. Question 2, see we are talking about M1 paper and M2 paper. So question 2A, you have to solve any 2 out of 3. So this is going to be, there are going to be 3 marks each. Okay, there are th going to be 3 questions which you have to solve and therefore they are for 3 marks each. So the total marking for question 2 will be 6. So this is going to be your A part. So B part, question 2 B part, it is going to be solve any 2 out of 3 and it will be for 4 marks. So 4 marks, any 2, it is going to be, give you a total of 8 marks. Understood? Yes, everyone. Now, let us talk about question 3. Question 3A would be solve any 2 out of 3. So, when we say any 2 out of 3, it is for 3 marks each. So, the total marks will be 6 in this case. Question B, solve any 1 out of 2, which is for 4 marks each. So, the total marks will be for your Question 3C, solve any 1 out of 2. So, remember, this is going to be an activity-based question, everyone. Okay? Activity-based question. It will be for 4 marks. So, the total number of marks here would be 4. So, as I have already explained you, I will write M1 over here. Question 1, compulsory question for 2 marks. Sorry, no, it's a compulsory question for 12 marks and the same thing would be for M2. I hope you have understood all of you. Yes, do not worry, I am there to help you. So, we are going to 
be together on this wonderful journey of you know learning maths all right everyone yes so i was uh, as i was telling you everyone let us start with this wonderful journey of maths together and we are going to start today with the first chapter called as matrices so i i know that you know all of you must have studied this particular chapter okay in your 11th standard and 12th standard is just 11th standard will be the base and 12th standard you will just study in advance but do not worry even if you you know some students have not understood this topic in 12th standard i am there to help you all right so i am going to teach you all the best basics of this particular chapter so do not worry all right so when we talk about matrix what is a matrix yes can you please write down it is a rectangular arrangement of numbers in m rows and n columns okay so let me give you an example a rectangular arrangement of numbers in rows and columns yes so can you can anybody tell me what are the number of rows what are the columns yes you're right so these are going to be the horizontal ones are going to be your rows and the vertical ones are going to be your columns so this matrix is of the order m into n okay so m are going to be your number of rows and n are you going to be your number of columns correct so now this is what a matrix okay now can anybody tell me what is the order of this matrix the order of this matrix is 2 by 2 why because there are two number of rows and two number of columns everyone yes is it right understood this part okay so now this is called as a 2 by 2 matrix right you know what is a 2 by 2 matrix right everyone yes so these are this matrix is going to consist of rows and columns m are going to be the number of rows always remember the first thing is m which is nothing but the number of rows and n is nothing but the number of columns okay now if i give you an example let's say this is the matrix yes so now can anybody tell me which kind of matrix is this Yes. Yes. So as you can see over here, these are the number of rows, right? How many rows? There are three rows, and how many columns? Again, there are three columns. Correct. So if you can see, number of rows are three, number of columns are three. That means that is a three by three matrix. Matrix of the order three. Understood? Yes. Okay. now let us move on with another thing suppose i tell you okay there are now we have a matrix this is a matrix in which there are okay now let's say for example this is our matrix and if somebody tells you tell me how many number of rows how many number of columns can anybody tell the number of rows are going to be 1 okay and the number of columns are going to be so this is going to be 1 by 3 matrix why because 1 is going to give you m which is nothing but the number of rows and n is going to give you the number of columns which is 3 right okay now i am going to start today with the types of matrices does anybody know what are the different types of matrices any guesses okay let me tell you see the first type is a row matrix so from the name itself you know it is very easy right when we say a row matrix what do you think it is can anyone tell me it's a row matrix yes okay so row matrix 
it will consist of a single row. Is it right? Yes. Now, second is going to be a column matrix. So, a column matrix. That means it is just going to consist of column. So, can you now tell me what is the order of this row matrix? Yes, that's right. This row matrix is of the order 1 into 3. Why? Because there are 3 number of columns in this matrix. Okay. And this order. Can you tell me the order of the column matrix that is given over here? Yes, that's right. It is going to be, see there are 3 rows and 1 column. So, it is going to be 3 by 1. Yes, everyone? Understood? Yes. Now, let us move on to the next part from your textbook that is a zero matrix. Now, it is very, you know, every anybody can tell me what a zero matrix is. Zero matrix is the third type of matrix. Yes. So, when we say zero or a null matrix. So, zero matrix is going to be Can we say this is a zero matrix everyone? Right? Because it just consists of the zero. Yes. Zero or null matrix. Why? Because all the elements are going to be zero in this case. Right? Okay. Let us move on to another type called as a square matrix. So, we are going to say a matrix. Okay. A matrix with the number of rows equal to number of columns is called as a square matrix. So, as we can say or anybody of you can say 2 by 2 matrix and 3 by 3 matrix are going to be examples of square matrix. Why? Yes, that's right because the number of rows and columns are equal. So, when number of rows and columns are equal, we say it's a square matrix. Alright? So, this is a matrix of the order 2 by 2. Yes, it's a square matrix and this is the matrix of the order. Yes, that's right. It is going to be a 3 by 3 matrix. When the number of rows and columns are equal, we say that this type of matrix is a square matrix. Yes, isn't it easy everyone? Okay, let us play a simple quiz sort, sort of a thing, okay? Let me help you. Let us start, as I, as I already told you, let us play a quiz. But before that, there is one very, very important concept which I would like to tell you all. Can you guess the concept? The concept is that in a square matrix, okay, when we talked about a square matrix, as I already told you, the number of rows and number of columns are going to be equal. Isn't it? Am I right? Okay. So, if I give you, let's say for example, if I give you this matrix. First tell me, is it a square matrix? Yes. Why? Because the number of rows and number of columns are equal. Right? Okay. Now, this is a square matrix, you, we all know this concept. But, if I tell you there is a matrix in which the elements are above the diagonal. First tell me, can you tell me a diagonal in this matrix, square matrix? I will show you the diagonal. See, this is, this can be one diagonal. Am I right? Or this can be another diagonal. Okay? So, when we say elements above the diagonal or elements below the diagonal, you have to remember that number of rows and number of columns, they are going to decide the, the elements above and below. Let's see how. If this is a matrix of order i into j, okay, if i is less than j, means what? The number of rows are less than the number of columns. What do we say? 
when the number of rows are less than the number of columns, we say that the elements are above the diagonal. Yes? So, can you tell me which are the elements about? First, tell me when i is less than j. Okay? So, let's take an example of that. i is what? Number of rows. j is what? Number of columns. So, when I say i, okay, so that means the number of rows. How many number of rows? 2. How many number of columns? 3. Is i less than 3? And which is the diagonal over here? Yes. So, let me tell you that these are called as elements above the diagonal. So, this, this, is, this is the diagonal part. So, these elements are called elements above the diagonal. Understood everyone? But, if I give you another example in which i is greater than j. What is the meaning of this? The number of rows are going to be greater than the number of columns. Yes? So, what are the number of rows? Okay. Let me give you an example. Alright? Okay. Now, we say the number of rows are greater. That means, can I say this is a right example? Yes, everyone. Why? Because the number of rows are how many? 1, 2, 3. Right? Number of columns are 2. So, rows are greater than columns. So, we say that they are called as elements below the diagonal. So, can you tell me the elements below the diagonal? See, I am going to tell you these are the elements below the diagonal. Can you see the triangle? These elements are called as below the diagonal elements. Understood? Yes? So, now Till now, we have discussed five, no, four types of matrices, okay. So, what we are going to do is, we are going to play a simple game. Not game, let's say a simple questionnaire, okay, in whatever we have, I have explained you, alright. So, the simple questionnaire, if I say, let me give you an example, okay. So, what all did I teach you today? I taught you about... What is a matrix? Yes. How many number of rows and how many number of columns? Correct? Is it right everyone? Yes. So now, I am going to give you three, three matrices. And from those three matrices, you are going to differentiate them as square matrix, row matrix, column matrix. Are you ready? Okay. So tell me, which type of matrix is this? Yes, a column matrix. Why? Because number of columns is equal to 1. Yes? And what's the order of this matrix? This is a column matrix. What is the order everyone? Order is going to be 3 by 1. Why? The number of rows are 3. Number of columns? Just 1. So, M into N or I into J or here in this case, it is 3 into 1. Right? Understood? Okay. Now, another question. Yes. So, let me give you another example. If I say, this is a matrix. Any guesses? Which type of matrix is it? Right. A square matrix. Why? Because number of columns and number of rows are equal. Right? A square matrix. Can anybody tell me the diagonal? The diagonal elements are going to be 1, 4, 8. That's right. Can a matrix only have one diagonal? No. There can be two diagonals. Correct? Because it's a square matrix. You know square has two diagonals, isn't it? So, one more diagonal, this is going to be this one. Yes, perfect. Alright? So, I hope everyone has understood and I hope everyone has enjoyed this journey. Yes? See you for next time.